All right, so in the last video, we got it set up to uh, iterate through our questions and then we were able to detect uh, basically when the user has answered all the questions and then try to navigate to the end screen. So we're not gonna work on the end screen just yet. We're gonna add a new feature here uh, for animations on correct and incorrect answers. So we wanna want to basically uh, change the color here of the answer choice to red or green, more or less and then uh, give a little pause before we switch to the next question. So the way we're gonna do this is one, based on whether or not they have the right answer. When they submit, uh, we want to uh, choose a class to apply. So the way this is gonna look is one, I can, let me use the selected answer in the log that we already have. And what I just wanna see, does selected answer equal our current question dot answer and so let me save this and hopefully actually let me remove any of these other log statements that we have as well I think that's all of them that one there all right so as I click on one of these uh, does the what's the correct syntax here script source so this should be true which that says false uh, the alert should be true, so it's looking like it's not correct. So let's log out the selected answer and the current answer. When we click, so one and three, it looked like for that one, the alert was four and four, so that should have been correct. And uh, where do we put the JavaScript in a script tag? So it should be one and one. So that looked right. So let me, let's do this one more time. I don't know what I was missing there, so. So where do we put the HTML script tag? So since uh, what we're pulling out of here is a string and the other one is a number, we can't use triple equals because that's a strict comparison. It will actually compare the data type as well. If we use a double equals, that should give us what we're looking for. So where do we put the, or actually syntax for this uh, should be C. So that is true. If I do this one wrong, uh, we don't put it in a JS tag. That should be false. All right. So we're able to detect whether or not uh, the, the answer was correct. So uh, basically, based on that, we wanna figure out which class to apply. And we're gonna have two different classes, a correct class and an incorrect class. So there's lots of different ways we could do this. I could start with a class to apply and I could just have it be incorrect by default. And then say if and then I could use this stuff. If it actually is correct, then I will just update class to apply to correct. So this is a, a pretty common technique uh, to go ahead and give a default value. So instead of, instead of me checking to see, does it equal this? If so, do this. If it doesn't equal this, then do something else. Uh, I can just set the default to incorrect, then check to see if it is correct and uh, go ahead and update that to correct. Now there's another way that we could do this is, and this is gonna throw an error because I've already got it defined, but I could say const class to apply, and I could use the ternary operator where I could say selected answer equal equals current, current question dot answer. And the way the ternary operator works is if this condition is true, then I will assign this value. If it's not, then I'll assign uh, this value. So this accomplishes the same thing. Uh, if you are comfortable with the syntax, it obviously is uh, just a one-liner. It's wrapped because my uh, editor is short, uh, but it's a one-liner versus uh, three or four lines here. So uh, I think this one is a little bit more readable. This one is, if you're comfortable with the ternary syntax, it's uh, just as useful. So uh, we've got the class to apply. Now we need to actually apply it. Let's just, uh, let's just log out class to apply just to be sure that that's right. And this is kind of my process here. As I go through, I'll make sure I log stuff out along the way to check to make sure things look right. So that should be correct. This one should be incorrect. Okay, so that looks like it's working. So now we wanna actually go ahead and apply this class. So we'll get our selected choice and we'll get the parent element. So what we're doing here is the, the selected choice is uh, this piece of text that we're clicking on but we actually want this whole, the container element. So to get that, we'll grab the parent element and we'll say class list 
dot add and this is how you apply classes in JavaScript and we'll add in the class to apply so let's uh, let me grab let's see let's grab this container let's click on it and notice that it applied this correct class here so that's what we wanted if we uh, do it again this is an incorrect option so it should give the incorrect class but you'll notice that it actually keeps the uh, correct class as well so what we want to do is uh, do the same exact thing except eventually we want to uh, remove the class because we just want the class to be there for just long enough to show the color and then move on so the way we're gonna do this and actually uh, let's let's go ahead and do the CSS part of this first so we can just see what it looks like to add these classes all right so in of our inside of our CSS we're gonna add two classes one is the correct and it's just gonna be a background color and it's gonna be a green color uh, this is actually uh, I pulled this from the uh, bootstrap colors that they use for correctness and uh, then the incorrect is gonna be the same kind of thing but the background color it's gonna be a red color DC three five four five let's just oh, four five make sure that looks like a red color there we go so now uh, what we should see since we've got the remove comments it out uh, as I click here it's gonna add the class but it won't remove it so if I uh, you see a green and red and then this should be another red and then we go to the end page so what we want to do is remove that class after we're done but uh, if we have these back to back uh, it's going to apply the class remove the class immediately and it seems like nothing happens so what we want to do is use a set timeout to give a little bit of delay uh, before we actually remove that class so set timeout uh, is a function built into JavaScript that we will call and it takes a callback function with uh, what you want to do and then it takes a parameter of how long you want to uh, be delayed so inside of here uh, we're gonna remove the class and then we're going to go ahead and get the new question as well so we're gonna do all of that inside of this set timeout that is going to wait for a thousand milliseconds or uh, one second here so let's see what this looks like let's save this let us and this uh, auto reload just reloads a couple of times so I give it a second here uh, so let's do a correct one which script source should be correct so that should show green and then alert box is not a real thing so that should show red and notice it goes away and then it handles uh, every, everything pretty uh, pretty well so in the next video what we're going to do is create our heads up display which is going to display uh, what question what number what question number we're on and then what the user score is so we'll we'll talk about tracking score there as well so that's going to do it for this video and i'll see you in the next one